I think it's really important for other applicants to definitely have somebody or multiple people look over their application in order to point these things out. Mission Accepted, Season 1, Episode 6. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm excited to chat with you. But first of all, congratulations on uh, an already successful application cycle. Let's talk about why you think you've been successful so far during this application cycle. I think it was both a combination of me really putting my all into my application as well as telling my own story and not trying to necessarily fit in uh, trying to be someone who I'm not or be different than what I already am. So I really tried to push and make sure that I showed my experiences in a light that really highlighted my passions as well. Yeah. Very cool. I, uh, as you know, I'm a huge fan of storytelling and telling your story and having your story help you stand out. Um, and, and having your story is what makes you unique and not necessarily going out and, and finding that one extracurricular activity that nobody else has done. Um, and so that's, that's good and exciting. How many interviews have you been on so far? I've been on two. I have one more scheduled for January and still waiting to hear back from a lot of schools. Okay. So typical application cycle this year, everything's delayed, but two interviews so far, uh, one acceptance so far, still waiting to hear back from the other school. So um, all, all it takes is that one. So congratulations. Thank you. All right. Are you ready to jump into your application and see, see what we have here? Let's do it. All right. So uh, I, I love to note, obviously, first off, right off the bat is submission date. And your submission date is a little bit later. Talk about um, kind of mid-July submission. So it was really my activity section that held me back. I was struggling with that for the longest time. I didn't know how to approach it normally with the pre-medical societies um, or my pre-med advisor. They always focus on the personal statement, and mm -hmm. I was not prepared to handle the activity section. So that kind of delayed it as well as I took my MCAT uh, on the 20th of June. And I was really nervous about that. So I kind of put my entire effort into that for the first month of June as well. Yeah, that is a very common, uh, very common story for what happens when someone is taking the MCAT during that time frame is everything else gets put on hold. And and so it comes, it comes with a later application submission. And so you could see with, with your application submission uh, being mid-June, not getting processed until late August. Uh, obviously, not the best timing, not the best scenario. 2020, uh, for everyone, was delayed for AAMC. They had a ho horrible time uh, turning around applications with uh, transcripts and everything, getting mailed to the wrong address and just so many issues. So um, not uh, not an application killer, especially this cycle. So not horrible, but a very common thing that happens, especially with that MCAT being pushed back to a later date. Looking at your uh, kind of the rest of your application here, n not marking disadvantaged, no other um, kind of red flags in the, the red red flag area, uh, which is always good. And we get to transcripts. Transcripts uh, looking pretty solid. I highlighted a, a C there in OCHEM, right? You're you're like the first person ever that got a C in OCHEM and, and was able to make it to medical school. It's amazing how that happened. It's incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought nobody could get in with a C in OCHEM. Um, and... Uh, moving on, uh, obviously, OCHEM Labs uh, were some of the lower grades here, but still BB pluses, really good uh, GPA. When we get down to your GPA here, uh, 351 Science with this strong upward trend as it was going from year to year to year. Um, so good job with that. Uh, obviously, your all other GPA at a 4.0. Um, and your total GPA at 3.7. So solid GPA, not holding back anything for you. So good job with that. Uh, then we get to your MCAT. Uh, really, really solid MCAT score above the average for matriculation. What do you attribute to the strong MCAT score? Honestly, I was absolutely shocked when I got this score. <laughs> 
Um, my initial diagnostic back in November of 2019 was a 498. Yep. And I was happy at the time with that because it was my first time ever taking a diagnostic. But as I got closer to my test date and it kept getting pushed back, I kind of lost motivation. And so my highest um, diag- or test score uh, from Four. Kaplan was yeah. a 507. Wow. And that was three days before I took the test. And I was freaking out, but I, for the last two weeks before my test, I studied my butt off in chemistry and biochem. I really focused on those two areas. And when I got my score, I cried um, because I was not expecting that jump. I might have expected like a 509 yeah. um, or a 507. So I was really happy with that, but definitely I didn't realize like how much biochem I needed to study. Um, and so I kind of neglected a little bit of bio and I focused on chemistry, which before I would only have a highest score of 126 in that area and getting a 129, I was like blown away. Yeah, that's, that's huge. And, and kind of potentially, right. The, the Kaplan full length exams I've heard are one of the more, uh, inconsistent in terms of how they reflect for your double AMC. Um, but, uh, obviously great score. Um, so, so good job with that. Moving on to the activity section. So, so stat wise, obviously not a huge issue for you. Strong overall GPA, uh, a little bit more kind of average science GPA, but, but stellar MCAT score. Um, we get into your activity section right off the bat. Uh, we see lots of good experiences here. We got shadowing. We have um, being this teaching assistant in, in in this class, which which um, tells me a lot about who you are. You jump into stories, right? Telling this story about the student Mary. I love storytelling in the activity section. It really highlights who you are, what you're all about. Um, so good job diving into that, right? A, a lot of students will will focus the description on what a teaching assistant does and what, and, and kind of the job description. And it just doesn't, it doesn't help me understand who you are. But when you talk about this student, Mary receiving a 77 on exam one and weeks of meetings and concepts and talking through problems and, and her score improving, right? You continue those meetings. You ended up with an A. It just shows like, just highlights who you are and working through this. And right, it's a super common story, but it's just a story that helps connect you to the the reviewer, the person reading your application. Looking at physician shadowing, obviously important, um, a little bit of a time here, uh, 48 hours, so not a ton of time, but uh, you got it in there, which is good. Uh, shadowing descriptions in, in my mind aren't uh, super impactful, so nothing a ton to, to work with there. Uh, we have some conferences attended, which is great. Just shows um, some interests uh, that you have outside of medicine and and everything else. So um, just kind of showing who you are. So medical clinical, right, which is great. Working as a scribe. Um, not a ton of time. Why was it such a short amount of time as a scribe? So the reason I went into scribing was because I knew writing was one of my weak points mm-hmm. and I wanted to kind of be thrown into the world of medical writing and improve on it because I knew that was going to be a huge part of being a physician is making sure your documentation is really advanced. That way the next provider is able to understand your thought processes on that patient. Um, And so I got into it and I actually struggled really a lot with it. Um, But luckily my head scribe was working with me a lot um, to improve. And by the end of my time there, I decided that I wanted to do more patient interaction rather than just sitting and writing, although it was such a great learning experience. Um, So I decided to kind of try and pursue getting my EMT certification and um, start working in that direction. And I just decided that writing wasn't necessarily my strong suit, um, but I did improve on it, which was probably the most, um, the biggest takeaway that I had from that experience. Yeah, very cool. And you do have your your EMT certification now and, and working or volunteering uh, at the, the fire department uh, as a volunteer EMT. Why didn't that end up on your application? Um, I didn't start the volunteering process until my application was already submitted in the works. Um, okay. 
So I didn't feel like I should include it because I hadn't really had much experience in the field. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Um, all right. So a little bit of scribe job there. Um, a little bit of a story, right? The patient's family member continuously looked over my shoulder telling me what to write while I recorded the patient's story. Um, just uh, the 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 stories, I think, really, really help. And then the, the takeaway from it. Uh, and we'll get into um, a little bit in your personal statement. There's some of these learning experiences, which is what students love to rely upon and, and what you did here, right? It showed me that uh, I want to ease the patient's suffering by deciphering the root causes of their pain. This is less of a of a learning, like I learned that as a scribe, blah, blah, blah. This is more of a reflection of of the impact that it had on you and what you want to carry forward, which is good. I tried to include at least one anecdote in mm -hmm. every experience as I could kind of conjure them up and think about it yeah. um, to sort of not just highlight what I've been doing, but how it impacted me or what I took away from it. And that was thanks to your YouTube channels and <laughs> the podcasts. Um, those are really helpful in, tr in actually figuring out what those stories would be that would be most impactful or most helpful. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. You did a good job doing that. Um, so more shadowing, which is great. Talk about the the zero hours that you have listed here. How did that end up happening? So I actually have researched two things separate. So I put the publication in separate from the actual experience. So the actual experience I have is, I think, 1,500 hours. Um, but I saw in some other applications that people had put their publications separately, and I had the space to do it because I didn't have um, necessarily 15 activities. Mm. Uh, which is okay, I've learned. Um, but yeah. I decided to put that separate just to show that I had a publication rather than writing it um, somewhere along the lines of yeah. the that's, that's the publication here. I'm, I'm talking about the shadowing. Why is this shadowing listed as zero hours? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, that was for COVID. So I was originally intended to shadow um, through, it was going to be May through June with that specific provider. Um, and I hadn't gotten to it yet, but I kind of projected what I would be doing. And unfortunately I hadn't been able to just because hospitals aren't allowing shadowing. Okay. The story, right. I, as soon as I see a, a story with some names and stuff, I, it makes, makes me excited and happy to, to see that. So that's good. Uh, publications, zero hours is, is perfectly fine. A lot of students will do that. Uh, and then how you, you commented on here is, is perfect for that. Um, getting into the the rest of the application in terms of uh the ex other experiences that you had i think just a a, a good well-rounded experiences um uh, american red cross and some time there and virology uh some time there for conferences some leadership stuff uh which is great so just lots of well-rounded different things that were were taking up your time uh and then I think description wise, uh, I think you did a good job, not just giving a uh, very basic kind of job description uh, things, but really focusing on impact and, and what you did. Um, we get into uh, some more medical clinical experience as this volunteer around the world. Um, again, getting into a story with Maria and, and the, the impact that you had on, on her, I think um, just again, from a storytelling standpoint for descriptions is just, it's super impactful and, and just much better than um, uh, what students try to do with this and trying to focus on learning and takeaways and just basic job descriptions. So good job with that. Thank you. Um, we get to uh, the Silver Wings organization. I, I highlighted this one because I, I think it's important uh, when you look at this, so this is not medical clinical, but you marked it as a most meaningful experience. And I think it's really important that students don't think of most meaningful experiences as only medical and clinical experiences, but truly who are you and what are the most impactful moments and uh, impactful experiences in your life. And so for you, it was the silver wings, not medical, not clinical, but it's really important to you. 
uh, obviously lots of hours. And so you're, you're spending your time there, which reflects why it's important to you or that it's important to you. And, and then these non-medical clinical things, when you don't have a patient anecdote, they're hard to, to really talk about and focus on. But I really, the, what I typically recommend is focusing on numbers. And you did that, it, it really stood out right away. It was um, all right, taking on the role of development uh, officer, helping grow the chapter from six to 22 members. Right, Just those numbers of impact really highlight your impact and who you are and, and what you're doing. So good job um, focusing on um, on those things. Uh, research, lots of hours uh, doing research, which is great, uh, most meaningful as well, obviously with a lot of hours that, that typically correlates to what's what's meaningful for you. Um, the the descriptions for research are, are pretty basic, but research, it's hard to, to get into stories and, and talking about those things. So um, I think you did a good job with those. Uh, and then leadership, uh, more leadership, club soccer and golf, right? A lot of students wouldn't put this on an application because it's like, well, it doesn't really count. It's not medical clinical. It's uh, why am I going to put sports on an application? But it, it shows a lot about who you are and, and where you are focusing your, um, your attention, which is great. Then we get to, again, just I, I highlighted this snow club one as well, right? Again, just... It, I, I know a lot about who you are now because of these experiences. I know you're, you're probably an athletic person. You have lots of interests outside of, of healthcare and medicine. Um, uh, obviously, someone who is in, involved in a lot of athletics that, that comes with teamwork and communication skills and dedication to a sport and, and all of these other intangibles that you don't necessarily have to spell out in the description, but I can... Re- understand that just by knowing that you've been involved in these things. So that's the the benefit of putting these things that a lot of students don't think about putting in. All right. And then we get to your personal statement. So good job with the activities, descriptions, talking about those things. Uh, and then we get to the personal statement. I think there are some, some areas where we could have changed around a couple things uh, to make it even stronger. So right off the bat, good storytelling, right? Humid day in the middle of the Dominican in the mountain range, right? I can, I can see that. I can feel it. Uh, I, I, can, I can experience that just based on your words here, right? Interacting with this girl, holding up your stethoscope. Um, you're going to listen to her heart as you move closer, uh, blah, 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 right? And, and so good storytelling, uh, good, good description here which I love. So you, you talk about this uh, experience and um, how it was this eye-opening experience. And here's where you kind of fall into a common trap that a lot of students get into and in talking about these learning experiences, right? I learned medicine transcends language barriers by forming cherished bonds of trust and respect between patients and myself, right? Okay, and why does that make you want to be a physician, right? I always get to these very basic kind of learning statements, and I always ask, well, why does that make you want to be a physician? Um, the the same thing here, right? I recognized that one-time mobile clinics cannot make a lasting impact on improvis- uh, impoverished villages, right? Yes, that is true, but why does that make you want to be a physician? Uh, it led into this statement that you then went on to become an executive board member, uh, to facilitate the presence of a presence of medical care in rural communities of the Dominican, uh, and so you kind of went from this. I'm going to tell you a story of this patient interaction to leading to more of a resume of this led me to be an executive board member, and then a lot of your as we'll we'll dive in a little bit further. A lot of your personal statement is very resume based of I did this and then this and then this and a little bit less of this is why I want to be a physician it's a lot of here's who I am and how powerful I am because I'm this executive board member I've done this I've done that uh, and so very common trap that students get into uh, but I think you you balanced just enough of the medicine side of things that it, it at the end made me understand who you are and why you want to be a physician. And you closed with a really powerful conclusion. So we <clears throat> get over this second paragraph here 
and then jump to um, uh, kind of again this little bit more of the resume of okay now you're volunteering at the Red Cross and uh, a little bit more of the here's what I learned, right? This taught me that medicine was comprehensive, both medical and psychological healing are necessary for overall well-being, right? True. And, right? That's the typically where I, I go with my comments when I'm editing personal statements. Yes, and, right? What, what, why is that important to you? Why you want to be a physician, right? And then more of the resume, right? This this then led to this, then led to this, then led, right? So a, a little bit less of why you want to be a physician and more of look at how impactful I am. I was this founding member member of the Silver Wings chapter, and I got to do all this cool stuff, right? So a little bit more resume um, and, and finishing off here, one of the largest in the country, right? That is you going, look at how awesome I am and less here's why I want to be a doctor. I, I can totally see that now that I'm like looking at it through your eyes. Yeah. I didn't necessarily realize it when I was writing it. Um, that's, I guess that style of writing was kind of pushed on us through the uh, and pre-medical committee. They're like, show your, your process through uh, what your experiences are and then wrap it up at the end with why. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I completely disagree with, with, with a lot of the, the pre-med advisors out there who are pushing this sales pitch aspect of a personal statement of show me how amazing you are and, and why you think you're going to be a great doctor, right? In your personal statement, I think a lot of what you talked about in, in this personal statement could have been and, and 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 was a lot of what your activity section is, right? That's where you're like, yeah, I was the founding member of this chapter and we grew from this to this and we did this and this, right? That is is showing how awesome you are and showing the impact that you had. And I typically reserve the personal statement to, why do you want to be a doctor? Don't tell me why you think you're going to be a great doctor. Don't tell me why you think you're awesome. Don't sell me anything. Just like, sh just show me, show me your story and, and why you want to be a physician. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Lots and lots of advisors, right? I even have, it's, it's funny. I'm, I'm friends with a lot of deans and directors of admissions. And there's a, a, a friend that I had, uh, I have who is, um, who used to be a pre-med advisor at a school. And now she's the director of admissions at a medical school. And when she was at her undergraduate institution as a pre-med advisor, like, she she like had a whole curriculum teaching her students a lot of what I teach and the storytelling and and how to how to make these personal statements and and all this stuff and now that she's the director of admissions the advisors coming up after her are like don't listen to Dr. Gray he doesn't know what he's talking about they're like they're like undoing everything that she had put into place and I'm like well, who would you believe? Someone who's now a director of admissions <laughs> or someone who is still just, not, not just, but s someone who's the, the the undergraduate advisor. I'm like, oh man, like a lost opportunity there, but that's okay. Um, not not everyone agrees with me. That's that's okay. You then talk about being a scribe and and what that looked like, um, right? The, the, the thing that you did here, again, very common is right? You explored the art of preemptive differential diagnosis by analyzing a patient's history, right? You got into this very common trap of, I'm already going to be an amazing physician. I know how to look at a patient's history and, and know what's going on, right? It's, it's a very common trap of, uh, of quote unquote, selling that you have these skills already necessary to be a physician, right? Medical school is going to teach you all this stuff. Uh, residency is going to teach you how to be a doctor. Um, I don't need to understand that at this point. I don't, I don't, I'm not only accepting students who know how to create a differential diagnosis, right? Um, so you get into the, the excitement of expanding your knowledge, right? So very common kind of cliche, I like science uh, kind of statement. Um, all these extra hours outside the hospital to increase your medical terminology. Uh, so again, just very common traps. It's not, it's not horrible, but it's just a very common trap. Uh, and it's it's taking away from you and your story of why you want to be a physician. Um, but I think you've done enough, right, of 
of showing these interactions and all, all the storytelling that you did in your activity section, I think make up for um, more of a distraction of your personal statement, which is good. Um, right, again, the, the, the thing I highlighted here, right, I noted attention to detail, confidence, and leadership were vital for practicing medicine. And, and typically all that is is I'm going to tell you what's important for medicine, and I'm either going to tell you a little bit later that I have those things as well, or you're just going to assume that I have them as well, and I'm ready, right? I know that they're part of practicing medicine. I'm confident I have them. You should accept me. All right, very, just to, again, very common traps. Um, and then we get to where I think the, the strongest part of your, your personal statement is the conclusion, which is, is a good place to be strong. Um, and what I like to focus on is kind of what is your grand vision for, for your uh, future as a physician? And here you focus on just what you want to accomplish, right? Um, by talking about it's your goal to better the perceptions of America globally and impact people's immediate lives by having the privilege to deliver compassionate and skilled healthcare to the citizens of the world. Um, and then uh, just just finishing off very strong. So great, great ending. Um, and then just uh, some areas where the personal statement could have been improved. But overall, again, the, the application is looked at as a whole right? Your, your activities were very strong. The storytelling was strong there. The personal statement, a little more resume, a little bit more sales pitchy, really strong conclusion. Stats held up, um, weren't going to close doors for you. Overall, uh, enough to get you invitations for interviews and, and now an acceptance. So good job. Thank you. Thoughts, comments? What do you, what do you see hearing all of that? I know it's so, sometimes it can be hard to, to hear all that, but no, I'm so happy to hear it because I look at my writing and I'm, I go over it like 20 times <laughs> in my head. And until you hear somebody else give their opinion of it, you really don't um, see your own faults necessarily. Like I would skip through spelling mistakes and not even realize that they were there unless somebody else pointed them out. I had my uncle read all my applications um, cause he's a lawyer and he, does that for a living, just looking through pieces of paper. Uh, so I was lucky enough to have that. Um, but I think it's really important for other applicants to definitely have somebody or multiple people look over their application in order to point these things out, um, especially somebody with a lot of experience. And that's also part of the reason why I wanted to come on here was for you to actually go through my application and point out what could I improve upon? Cause I'm going to have to be doing this again in four or five more years when I'm applying for residency, I'm going to have another personal statement that I'm going to have to write. And to get that improvement now rather than later would be a lot more helpful as well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, congratulations on the acceptance. Uh, obviously the, the application as a whole was good enough to get you in, get you, th get you through this process. Um, Thank you for coming on and, and sharing the application and helping others learn from from your successes and some some potential mistakes to improve on. Thank you so much for having me.